Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. You all know about Wine, right? The compatibility layer that is free and open source and that lets you run Windows programs on Linux. You all know how it serves as the base of Proton for gaming on Steam, for example. But did you know there is a commercial implementation of Wine, which is called Crossover? Let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Kernel Care Enterprise. Keeping servers safe, compliant, and ensuring constant uptime becomes a full-time job that has to be automated. To do that, you need a live patching tool that integrates with automation tools and vulnerability scanners, that is supported with the latest patches, that lets you decide what patches are rolled out across your organization, and that runs inside the firewall. Kernel Care Enterprise does all of this. It provides you with more integration, more support, and more control. It works in your local infrastructure via ePortal, a dedicated patch server that runs internally but outside your firewall. This server acts as a bridge between internal patch servers and the main kernel care patch server. This approach is ideal for staging and production environments that need strict isolation from external networks or require more stringent control over the patches to be applied. Try kernel care enterprise for free by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, so what is crossover? Well, first, we need to know that Crossover is developed by Code Weavers, which is a company that can either develop Crossover or port some software to Linux or contribute uh, like some technical efforts for companies that need them. But their main focus seems to be on Crossover. Crossover is a commercial implementation of Wine. It seems like Code Weavers contributes two thirds of the Wine code, according to their website, that most of the developments they make on their own version of Wine is given back upstream so everybody benefits from it when they develop something on Crossover. So Crossover in itself is a software installation platform. It combines a graphical user experience that lets you install Windows programs on Linux with a database of installation recipes which contain all the necessary scripts and dependencies for the programs you want to install. So basically you search a program through the graphical user interface, it queries the database and then it gives you the installation recipes that you can use to install said software. So if you know about Lutris or play on Linux, it's basically the same concept. You look for an application, you click install, it offers you a script to install the thing, and you just click next, next, next until the application is installed. And generally, if the software says it's gonna run, it's gonna run. Now Crossover supports games, of course, but it also supports regular Windows programs, something that we often forget that one can do. So the thing you should compare Crossover specifically is not really Lutris or Proton or just the regular installable version of Wine, it would be more play on Linux, but with a few advantages. First, if you buy a crossover license, it helps the Wine project, since code weavers contribute a lot of their code to the Wine project and contribute a huge amount of the Wine code itself, then buying crossover, well, it makes developers work on Wine, which improves life for everybody. Second, depending on the plan you picked for crossover, you also get phone and email support. So if making sure that an application runs and keeps running as the versions are updated is important to you, then it's kind of important to have that kind of support. It's basically something more meant for companies than individuals, but it's still nice to have it. And third, Crossover has some nice management tools. It installs applications in bottles, just like Play on Linux. Bottles are like their self-contained Windows fake drives, which install the application and all the dependencies in one folder. Well, Crossover lets you know if one of the bottles you already have is suitable to install another application, which means you don't have to duplicate bottles every time you need to install another app. If one of the bottles you have is already compatible with that app, you can install it directly on there and save some disk space, around 1.5 gigabytes in some cases. Okay, so how do you install and use Crossover for those who are interested? Well, Crossover is a paid for application, but you can get a two weeks free trial just to make sure that the applications that you need to run are supported and run well within Crossover. Prices start at 38 euros, so it's going to be a little bit more in US dollars. And with that, you get a one-time license. You get none of the updates, you get no specific support. And basically, you just get the version of Crossover that you bought right there and then. And you can keep running your software if you want. I wouldn't recommend you go for this one, because the main advantage of Crossover is the support you can get. Now, if you want to get that phone support, you need to go for the 59 euros plan, which includes said phone support, but also one year of updates to Crossover and a renewal fee that is reduced if you want to renew your subscription to Crossover. 
There is also a lifetime license that grants you uh, email support on top of phone support and basically gives you updates for life. But it's super pricey at 475 euros, so you really need to make sure that you really want to help support the Wine project or that your application is super mission critical and that you'll never be able to replace it with anything else. Because otherwise, just buy the one year plan. Installing Crossover doesn't require you to enter any credit card details or anything, you can just download the software right there and then. There are dev packages, there are RPMs, and there's also a .bin for every other distro, which you can run like in the terminal or just by making it executable in the properties of the file and opening it like any other file. So once you open Crossover, you get a nice little GDK-based interface, or at least it looks GDK-based. You just look for the software you want to install by typing its name or by browsing the catalog itself. And once you select an application, it's going to tell you the rating, which is won't install, install but won't run, runs but with issues, runs great, or runs perfectly. Basically, it's a five-star rating system. If the rating seems okay to you, you can just select where the installation media is. It can be either an executable file, an install folder, or an ISO image, or a CD-ROM, or a DVD drive, whatever you want to use. You can just select it. For games, for example, you can even get a Steam install option. And then you just follow the directions. You click next, next, and next until your application is installed. And generally, if Crossover tells you that the app will run, it will run. So the advantage here compared to using just default Wine without any graphical user interface or whatever, is that first, Crossover creates a bottle. So it isolates your application inside its own virtual like Windows drive, which means that every other app you install won't mess around with this app installation. It also downloads and installs all the dependencies, the scripts, the tweaks, the, the registry entries that you need to make sure that the application, if it can run, will run. So you don't have to configure anything yourself manually, it just works in one click, like it's a one-click install. That's way better than having to look online for the various tweaks and configurations you have to apply. They're just done on the fly for you when you decide to install the application. Now, once your software of choice is installed, you can either launch it through the crossover graphical user interface, or you can just use your regular old menu or app launcher, because crossover will automatically create menu entries for you in your Linux menu. So you can just open the applications just like if they were Linux applications without even having to go through crossover. Now, for each bottle, you also get to configure set bottle, select the Windows version that you want to use, you can archive it, enable DXVK or eSync or other options if you want to try and tweak it to improve performance, but generally those tweaks will be applied automatically for you when you install the software. You can also archive your bottles, which means that if you have to restore your system, you can just reinstall Crossover, re-enable your license if you have one, and just import the bottle again, and you don't have to reinstall anything specific. All your configurations, all your config files are there immediately. Generally, it's a nice graphical user interface, it's a nice tool, pretty powerful, and it's probably the ultimate graphical user interface to manage all your Windows installation software. Okay, but what applications does Crossover support? Because having a nice graphical user interface, having pricing, etc., that's, that's all nice and well, but what software can you run? And this is where the issues start to appear. The first one I tried was Microsoft Office 365, and it runs. I, I can just install in one click, I downloaded the installer from the internet, I pointed Crossover to that, and it installed perfectly. I could activate it using my Microsoft account, and I can run Word, Excel, PowerPoint without any issues. Outlook also works. Access seemed to be stuck at creating a new database. It couldn't go past that. And I didn't try the other pieces, which I don't generally need for my work. But Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they were great. They open, they work. You can open documents. You can like edit, tweak, do graphics, install tables, do pivot tables on Excel. You can create your presentations, add animations, transitions. It all works. The problem is it's pretty slow. If you click on a tab to select something else and make sure that your application can actually do something on your file, you're gonna have to wait a little bit. It's not super reactive, it's not immediate, and doesn't make it unusable, but it doesn't make the use great. And after that, that's when I ran into a wall, because all the applications I wanted to try just aren't there. I couldn't find Photoshop Creative Cloud, I couldn't find any of the Affinity software, I couldn't find iTunes, and some installation scripts seem a little bit behind from what other installation applications can do. For example, Lutris can install in one click the Epic Game Store. It just works. When on Crossover it's listed at as install but won't run. 
which is incorrect because some installation scripts work to manage to install the Epic Game Store. So basically, Crossover is not a one-size-fit-all solution. You can just use that and make sure that every single Windows piece of software that you want will run through it. And that's an issue because that's what you would expect from a commercial implementation of Wine. So generally, Crossover seems to be a little bit confused on what to display to a user and what not to display. If I look on the database on their website, I can see a lot of software that could run. But if I look for that exact same name in the graphical application, the Crossover app, then I can't find this app. For example, iTunes, some versions are listed as working and compatible on the website. But on Crossover, if I type iTunes, nothing shows up. And it's not that Crossover hides applications that don't run, because some applications, you can look for them, select them, and it's going to tell you that they don't run. So I don't really know what they're trying to do here, hiding some applications and showing some others that will or won't run. I mean, the logical thing would only be to expose applications that do run at least a minimum, so basically three stars out of five. Anything else should be hidden for now, but it's not. So it's, it's a bit tricky to understand what app you can or you can't install and why some don't even show up in the list, which is very weird. And that's the main issue with Crossover. The, the graphical user interface is nice. The ability to install in one click is very nice. But the problem is the applications that people keep clamoring for online just aren't there. You don't have the Creative Cloud suite. You don't have the Affinity suite. You don't have any AutoCAD version. The only one that's listed is 2013 and it just won't run. You don't have iTunes. Like generally, the software that people just want isn't there apart from Microsoft Office. So what's the point of crossover, you may ask? Why wouldn't I just use Play on Linux or use regular Wine? Or if I want to play games, just use Proton and Lutris? And yeah, crossover isn't a magic bullet that will make every single piece of Windows software run on Linux. If it doesn't run with Wine or Proton, it probably won't run with crossover because crossover's backend is Wine after all. So if you're an individual, I don't really see any reason why you would want to buy Crossover. You can replicate the experience with Play on Linux or anything else. Where Crossover really is interesting, I think, is for companies. Because if you're held back on Windows by one or two pieces of Windows software, but you'd like to move to Linux because you could do anything else on Linux, then having those two pieces of software run through Crossover is better than having to manage them through Wine manually. Just because you can archive the bottle, export it, and put it on every one of your employees' devices. Buying the crossover license even for one year gives you the support, and it lets you ensure that the application will keep running if it ever stops doing so. So you have the tranquility of mind of knowing that the application that you depend on to run your business will continue to run because there's a company behind it that will ensure that it does. And so basically, the cost of the license is going to be way less than the cost of keeping using Windows. So that's the use case, I think, for Crossover right now. Individuals like you and me probably don't want to run Crossover. You'll, you'll do fine with Play on Linux. But companies that want support, that want commercial support to ensure that what they depend on can still work, I think they should go to Crossover instead of using a hacky user-based solution. Also important to mention, Crossover doesn't only run on Linux. It also runs on Chromebooks and on Macs, including the Apple M1 Macs through Rosetta 2. So it means that your software library that runs on Windows can now also be run on a lot of other computers, depending on your employees. So for a company, if you have a wide fleet of computers, including Macs, including Windows machines, including Linux machines or Chromebooks, then you can make sure that everyone uses the same version and the same software just by buying a few crossover licenses. It's, I think it's a good thing. So that concludes this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next videos I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!